Goodbye, Angels. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, David. So long, Dad. Good luck. Goodbye, Bertha. Goodbye, sir. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> well, of course we can't eat now. Bertha, have something for yourself and let people raid the icebox later. Yes, ma'am. And the children can have lamb hash on Saturday. Yes, ma'am. David, you and I will drive down to the club and await the outcome in the visitor's lounge. Okay, Mother. We could be quite a while, so get a book. Get a good book? Get Ivanhoe! Okay. We could be a while. <laughs> and Clay, I want you to stay here and hold down the fort. All right, Mother. And get on the telephone to Dr. Russell. I don't care whether he's in the operating room or having dinner, he will be at the club to give your father first aid. All right, Mother. Oh! And then study your French. All right? <laughs> Mother! What, for heaven's sake? Is it true about Uncle Henry? Well, it may very well be, but you do not say it to him. You do not say it down at the club. And you do not say it within a ten-mile radius of your father. <laughs> now, come on. We'll talk in here. No one will disturb us. Nobody comes near a dining room anymore. The thought of sitting down with a number of intelligent, attractive people to enjoy a good meal that's well-cooked and properly served, that apparently doesn't occur to people anymore. Nowadays, people eat in living rooms or kitchens, balancing their plates like jugglers. Soon they'll be eating in bathrooms. Well, why not? Simplify the process considerably. Sit down somewhere, Pop. Oh, uh, I'll sit here. We can look out. There's a purple finch comes to the feeder every morning. Now, I want to go over my funeral with you. Oh, pa. I want to do it. There are only a few more apples left in the barrel. You've been saying that for years, well, This pa. time it's true. So please, you're my eldest son. I want to go over this with you. I can't do this with anyone else. Your mother starts to cry, your brother isn't here, and your sister gets distracted. So concentrate, please, on my funeral. All right, Pop. First, here is my obituary. I've dictated to Miss Kovac down at the office this morning, and I've read it over twice, and it's what I want. It's thorough, without being self-congratulatory. I mentioned my business career, my civic career, and of course, my family. And I even touch my recreational life. I give my low score in golf, and the weight of that sailfish I caught off the keys. The papers will want to cut both items, but don't you let them. Okay, Pop. Now, I want the funeral service to be announced at the end of the obituary and to occur three days later. That will give people time to adjust their trips and move their appointments. And I want it at 3.30 in the afternoon. That uh, gives people time to digest their lunch, but doesn't obligate us to feed them dinner. <laughs> Notice I've underlined the word church. Mr. Fairweather may try to squeeze this service into the chapel, but don't you let him. I've lived in the city all my life, and I know a great many people. I want everyone to have a seat and feel welcome. If you see someone milling around the door, make sure to walk right up to them and find them somewhere to sit, even if you have to use the folding chairs. Are we clear on that? <laughs> yes, Pop. Uh. I've also organized these works to be... Oh, I also want them to print this picture. It's from when I was elected to chair the symphony drive. I don't look too old to die, nor too young. It won't make any difference. Okay, Pop. Uh. I've also dictated these works with played by Miss Manchester at the organ. This Bach, this Handel, that Schubert. Nothing gloomy, you'll notice. I want the and I want the service to start with a good rousing hymn. Onward, Christian soldiers. And then Fairweather, and make some brief, underlined brief, remarks about my life and works. Uh, do you plan to get up and speak, by the way? Me? You. Do you plan to get up and say anything? I haven't thought about well, that. Well, I don't, yet, Pop. if you don't want to. There's nothing more uncomfortable than an unwilling or reluctant speaker. But on the other hand, if you, as my eldest son, were to get up at your father's funeral and say a few quick words of farewell... Well, of course I will, Pop. Good. Then I'll write you in. Brief <laughs> remarks by my son, Richard. Do you have any idea what you would say? No, Pop. You won't make it sentimental, will you? Brad Hoffmeister's son got up the other day and said some very sentimental things about Brad. I didn't like it, and I don't think Brad would have liked it either. I won't get sentimental, Pop. 
On the other hand, you won't make any cracks, will you? Oh, you I have that tendency, know. Dick. At your sister's wedding, and your brother's birthday. You got up there and some very flip remarks about all of us. I'm sorry, Pop. Good. Because you love us, don't you? Yes, Pop. You love us. You may have moved a thousand miles away, you may have run off every summer, and you may be a terrible letter writer, but you love us, don't you? You love me. Oh, yes, Pop, really. Now at the graveside, just the family, I want to be buried under my mother and father and alongside my brothers. Leave room for your mother to lie beside me. If she marries again, still leave room. She'll come back in the end. <laughs> All right, Pop. Now, after the service, stay here for a couple of days, please, and accompany your mother. She gets nervous at any kind of gathering and tends to make bad decisions. For example, don't let her serve any of the good beef eaters gin if people simply want to mix it with tonic water. <laughs> and after that service, stay here, please, and don't leave for a couple of days. I promise, Pop. Good. And that's my funeral. I'm leaving you this room, you know. After I die, this table and these chairs will go to you. It's the best thing I can leave you by far. Thanks, Pop. And now, we'll rejoin your mother. Uh, you didn't see the purple finch feeding his young? Yes, I did, Pop. He did while I was speaking. That's right. Good. I'm glad you saw it. These doc those documents will be in my, in my, um, uh, safe deposit box, but behind the will and the stock certificates, the key will be in my left bureau drawer. Oh, Annie, it looks absolutely spectacular. Thank you, ma'am. Now, make sure the soup plates are hot. I always do, but I think we can dispense with the butter balls. Just give everyone a nice square of butter. Oh, I'll do butter balls now, oh, would you? How nice. And keep an eye on the ashtrays, Annie. Some people still smoke between courses, but they don't like to be reminded of it. I know. And let's see. Oh, yes. Before the guests arrived, I wanted to pay you. For you. Oh, and for Velma in the kitchen. It includes taxi fare, so you can both leave right after you cleaned up. Thank you. I put a little extra in your zanny. Just a treat, because you've been so helpful to the family over the years. Thank you. And now I should go check on the dining on the living room. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, Annie. I heard a strange rumor through the grapevine. Mrs. Rowland said you won't be available anymore. No. Oh, not even for us, Annie. We've used you more than anyone. I'm moving away. But but surely special occasions, Annie. I mean, if we're desperate. Can I still reach you at your nephew's? He's moving away too, ma'am. But where will you go? What will you do? I've got my sister in Milwaukee. But we'll be lost without you, Annie. You'll manage. But not like this, Sammy. We'll never match this. Thank you. I think I heard the bell. I'll get it. Women's coats upstairs, men's in the hall closet. Yes, ma'am. Annie! Thank you, Annie, for everything. You're welcome. Lately, I've been having this recurrent dream. We're giving this perfect party. We have our dining room back. And Grandmother Silver, before it was stolen. And Charlie's mother's royal blue dinner plates, before the movers dropped them. And even the finger bowls, if I could remember where they were. And we've invited all our favorite people. Oh. I don't just mean our old friends and family. I mean everyone we've ever known and liked. We have the man who fixes our Toyota, and that intelligent young couple who bought the Peyton house, and the receptionist at the doctor's office, and the new teller at the bank. And our children would be invited too. And they'd all come back from wherever they are. And, and we'd have cocktails, and hot hors d'oeuvres, and the cook in the kitchen, and two maids to serve, and everyone would get along famously. My husband laughs when I tell him the dream. Do you realize, he says, what a party like that would cost? Do you realize how much we have to pay these days for a party like that? Well, I know. I know all that, but sometimes I think it might almost be worth it. To us. To, to us. us. <laughs>